What you're looking at was once a busy colliery. About 120 years ago, when this place was a thriving coal mine, the Industrial Revolution had been going for something like 80 years. And the country needed energy, lots of it, to drive the great machines, mills, and engines. There must still be a bit of coal down there. Men, women and children dragged it up ready to be sent to the factories. Where I'm standing were the mining offices. And just over there is part of what's called the Canuck Extension Canal. Before the railways were built, the coal had to be moved by boat. And before the canals, there was just the horse and cart. The canals round here were built for one purpose only, to move coal, to supply a need, which was to keep the machinery running. This canal was built at the same time as the coal mine. So the coal came out of the mine and straight onto the narrow boat and off to where it was wanted. These narrow boats, as they were called, could carry up to 36 tons of coal and could be pulled by one horse, which is more than 15 times one cartful. In those days, energy was cheap, transport was cheap, and the wages were low. Many things have changed since then. For a start, boats didn't have propellers and everyday tools were different. There used to be hundreds of narrow boats around here. Back in 1920, four men could build a simple brand new boat out of timber in three weeks for 95 pounds. Today, four men, like Bill over there, could still do it in three weeks, but the cost would be over 10,000 pounds. Old people who knew what it was like in the 1920s must wonder what the world's coming to. 
the cost of a few bits and pieces now seems enormous. Bill here says he's earning more now than he's ever earned, and he's over 80. It was a few shillings a week when he started. This boat is finished with. It's done its job and is beyond repair. You've heard of the saying, don't burn your boats. It's easy to see what that means. This boat will never be used again. Today, lorries and the railways carry coal, so the canals aren't used for that anymore. That system of transport has now served its purpose, and today is only used for leisure and holidays. But in its time, the canal was the main transport route. Everything you can imagine was carried, sometimes for long distances. Iron, steel, stone for buildings, all types of food were carried. Soldiers and their equipment, including gunpowder, everything moving across the countryside. In olden times, to be crafty meant to be strong. In Old English, the word craft meant strength or power. Crafty people weren't just cunning, they had skills and strength which gave them power over materials or over other people who didn't have that power. During the Industrial Revolution, there was a need for power, a need for capability as well as skill. The country needed energy to drive machines which built strength. It needed skillful people to design those machines. Men like Telford, Watt and Faraday, who used iron, steam and electricity, as well as creators and designers of beautiful things such as Chippendale, Sheraton and Hepplewhite, who created furniture which is still used today. The country needs even more energy today. This part of Britain is still one of the biggest users of energy for industrial processes, making things. Quite apart from anything else, whole towns need electrical energy for heat and light. Where I'm standing is above a coal mine. The Lee Hall Colliery over there was sunk in 1956, specially to provide coal for this power station, the Rougely A, which is one of the biggest in the Midlands and was also built in 1956. Today, this power station uses over 5,000 tons of coal every day. Work that out on your calculators. The answer is over 2 million tons of coal every year used by this one power station. And with no transport costs, because the coal is underneath. Just down the road from here is the old canal. And it's easy to see that it's impossible for boats to supply the needs of today at just 36 tons per boat. Yep. Right. There was a time when launching a new boat was a big event around here. Today, this 70-foot coal narrowboat is being put back into the canal after a short overhaul. about it, launching a new boat, something you may have been working on hard for three weeks, is still quite an exciting feeling. No one wants to live on a canal anymore. Except, of course, on holiday. Wasn't much of a holiday then, I can tell you. Mostly it was cold, wet, and cramped up in a tiny cabin with nowhere to put anything. Smelly, too. So it was best to be up by the tiller to get the fresh air, or walking along with the horse. Not much room for screaming kids, I can tell you. Had to make sure they didn't fall in the canal. Some did in early times, and got drowned or crushed by the weight of the boat against the sides of the lock. Maybe slow, 
but 30 tons is difficult to stop. A boatman and his family would live on a boat like this. Imagine living for months on end, crammed into this tiny space. There might be a boatman, his wife, and two or three children. Sometimes babies were born on the boats, and it's certainly a well-known fact that they were kept here, in the bottom drawer. In early times, children of the boat people never went to school. Some couldn't even read or write their names, and it wasn't until about a hundred years ago that laws were passed improving conditions for the boat people. This is called a Bollinger engine, and they started fitting them in 1912. Before that, there was steam, and of course, the horse. It's a single cylinder semi-diesel engine and a valuable antique now, but it still works. It uses diesel oil for fuel. You'll be hearing a good deal more about the use of oil for energy. Now, getting it started is quite an art, and I, for one, haven't got the faintest idea how to do it. So I'll let Joe here, who was actually born on a narrow boat, show you how. Would you believe it? But Joe here has to use a blow lamp to heat the head of the cylinder. It has to be warmed up before it will do anything. Then you sort of have to tickle it a bit to get the thing primed. I ask you, can you see anyone in their right mind doing that today to start up a boat or a car? Here we go. One foot on the flywheel, making sure it doesn't kick you in the shin. And... Whoa! <laughs> Success! people still say that the Bollinger has a certain special sound. Quite peaceful, if you go in for that sort of thing. Remember, this machine was invented in 1912, and it fulfilled a need for those times, even though the railways were building up very quickly. Think how the engine is used today. This narrow boat can carry about 30 tons. It travels at four miles an hour. Not far from here on the motorway, you can get 40 tons carried on a lorry traveling at 70 miles an hour. Then there's a the sort of machine that can lift 350 tons of jumbo aeroplane and carry 400 passengers across 3,000 miles of sea in just six hours. Compare the horsepower of that with the horsepower of this. The Boeing Company of Seattle in America make jumbo jets. Ever thought one day you may settle down and build an aeroplane? First, you need a lot of people. Hundreds of thousands of coherent decisions just to build one engine. Mile upon mile of wire, years and years of learning your craft, as well as understanding the designs and technology. To get the thing into the air, you need four engines of about 40,000 horsepower each to give the necessary thrust of approximately 53,000 pounds for each engine. Cruising is easy at 5,000 pounds per engine. In today's terms, this is what craft design and technology is all about. And it's big, because the need is big. It has taken about 80 years to reach this. The need for capability today is, of course, totally different from what it was in those times when old Bill started work. And don't forget, it'll be different in under 20 years from now, when you're in the thick of it. So get learning, get with it. The need for capability starts the day you are born. It's not something that's just been thought of. This business of craft design and technology has been around since the world began. And mark my words, in the 21st century, 
it's going to be even more important, perhaps even more difficult, if there's going to be any sort of life at all. program start again next Monday at the usual time of